So Pixels was a live, real-time animated improv comedy show, quite a mouthful. And we produced it with a Winnipeg improv comedy duo named Stephen and Katie. The show ran over 10 days as part of the Winnipeg Fringe Festival, and we're running one more next month as part of the Winnipeg Improv Festival. Before I go much further, I'll give you guys a little clip so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they have tea here. Yeah, they, they must. Um, I mean, uh, uh, they can have shakes, waffles, lattes, or I think they'll have tea. They, they probably do. Uh, I'm glad that you came to me. Well, that's the least I can do. It's the least you can do. Well, I guess I could not come. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that would probably be the least. Uh, I just, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you can give me the time. I know that you're, you're about to. You're about to go. I'm about to go, and I'm never coming back. If everything goes to plan, I'll be a princess within six months. So here's a little diagram of the stage setup. You saw the two actors on either side of the stage in uh, VR headsets using controllers to motion capture, and each of those are connected to a pretty powerful computer and uh, sensors to track them moving in the 3D space, and then the show itself projected in the middle on a projection. It was a really small venue. We managed to fit 50 seats into it, and uh, it had no air conditioning, and uh, it had a very poor internet, which was a big problem for us. So we fought with it and fought with it, and they didn't get a lot of rehearsal time, so they kept like cutting out. And eventually, in Winnipeg, we happened to have this guy, this like indie internet service provider named Less.net. So we called up Less, and we're in a panic. We're like, Less, what do we do here? And he's like, I got, I got a thing. I can solve this. So. He ended up climbing the building next door and like to the, on the roof of the building he installed a satellite dish that beamed internet into the room behind the venue and then we were like bargaining with someone we weren't even supposed to have access to this room to put another dish to catch the internet and that finally solved it. Like literally this dude's an internet superhero. And uh, unfortunately that was the day before opening night. So. The very first time we successfully ran through the entire production was in front of the live, the live audience on opening night. Glad I wasn't on stage for that. <laughs> um, but it was really cool because we got to watch the performers using this technology and discovering new ways, discovering what works and what doesn't, and discovering how live, real-time animation can be used as a storytelling medium. And as one of the guys in the tech behind this, that was really fascinating for me. So what, what actually is cool about this? Like bringing all this extra complexity to the stage has to count for something, right? So first, obviously, you can take people anywhere. You can take them to this like science control room for like sketches or a haunted, uh, a haunted forest that we have or even simple places like a family kitchen. We did about 12 of these. Uh, these environments, but we had almost no budget to do this production, and so we didn't actually model all of these. They're actually just photographs. I'll show you the next clip here. There we go. Where we just put them like a mural behind the actors. Here's it. Right? The actors, and then once you introduce the camera frame, the audience can't even tell the difference. So it was a total hack, but it worked. And. Uh, that was really cool, but think about when you get a complete actual 3D environment in there with real <laughs> functional props, the kind of content that can become possible. You can also become anyone or anything. You don't even have to be human anymore. And for improv actors, you don't have to explain. You don't have to come up on stage and be like, all right, stick them up, or you know, show your badge, and like all these tells that you have to over explain as an improv artist. You can just, they know you're a doctor or a cop, and that's really cool. We also, um, you, can, you, can, you can do things like uh, hop out of frame, switch characters, and hop back in and be like, hey, so I just missed so and so? So you can actually do larger productions with fewer casts. And now, you saw that, that, that venue was pretty small, so we couldn't actually like, walk very far out of frame, 
So what we did is we built this little puppet thing. They could puppet themselves out of frame. And that was really cool because they also discovered you can fly. And flying on stage was really awesome. And uh, yeah, that was super neat. But we also got to play with the frame, which is something fairly unique to a stage production. I'll show you a little clip here where we did a car scene just by taking a really rudimentary outline of a car and we took some videos that to, to make it seem like they were whizzing past some buildings. Fictions, I don't know. You know I've never been in a cop car before except for one time. Oh yeah? Yeah, one time I got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> we also discovered a few types of content that work really well. So we, you know, through, through sort of watching the limitations of the tech and watching them work with these things, visual glitches, they get a great reaction from the audience. Every time their legs did some weird thing, just roaring laughter. So comedy works great. Comedy is awesome. It really brought improv to life in a new way. Kids content, having, you know, being able to play animals and play things without big, big mascot-like suits. And uh, having virtual hosts, like a, like a famous, you know, famous avatar, come on stage and host a real live event. Or even just having virtual people come as guests who aren't there. So that kind of stuff was really cool in this discovery process. But I want to talk about what went wrong. Because a lot went wrong in this. It was in a tiny room with no AC, no windows. And uh, we had we had to uh, uh, try to put as many fans on the computers as we could, and it just wasn't really working. It was just like still overheating. So air conditioning was kind of a requirement for a thing like this. And we also had a uh, we introduced a software update halfway through, and that introduced it fixed some things, and it introduced a bug so bad that I had to actually run out and fix it on stage, which was not a shining stage moment for myself. Uh, so having a backup, not just of your hardware, like an extra battery, but also of any software you're bringing out, that's pretty important. So where's this stuff going? Well, in the future, things are about to get a lot simpler. You won't need a computer. What you're seeing here is actually the entire setup that's coming out next year. So it's going to get a lot simpler. We're also going to get a lot better at facial tracking and tracking your eyes and your expressions. Right now, we're animating your face by trying to like analyze your microphone input and lip sync, and it's pretty good, but it's not amazing. You guys may have seen the uh, clicker Apple uh, emoji uh, feature of the iPhone 10, and that's pretty impressive. So that's the kind of tracking we're moving towards with your facial expression. So you can just act, and it'll capture you. We're also going to get better at tracking your whole body so we don't have these weird glitches. And we're going to get better at tracking particularly your hands. Because the controllers are about as clunky as this microphone here. So try doing fine motor coordination skills with that. But good hand tracking is coming. And at that point, there's going to be little difference between what an animator can do frame by frame and what you can do in real time as an actor on stage. And when augmented reality actually gets good enough, handful of years, and fast enough, and small enough that it's basically a fashion accessory, this is also going to go 3D for the audience too. And I don't mean like 3D TV or like, you know, those crummy things you have to wear in the movies, but like true immersive theater. And I'm pretty excited about that as a technologist because We've only scratched the surface of what's possible with live, real-time animation. And that just opens up a whole new world of storytelling possibilities. Thank you. I'm going to come for one question, but you guys can also try it right outside the door there. We have a little setup so you can try out the software. All right. Um, I'm curious to know, what, what are some of the skill sets that you're engineers need to uh, and possess and um, like it seems that for the uh, uh, face tracking features you might even need some AI for that so I was just curious you know. Um, surprisingly the like the hardware makers are kind of providing toolkits for doing a lot of that stuff so it's it's kind of getting easier and easier. I feel like we're at this point where we're in like 
game game engine. So you need to learn like Unity or Unreal and like C plus plus or C sharp. Uh, so programming or on the art side, you need to know Maya or Blender is a free option. And uh, it's kind of getting to the point where we can go. We can just sort of build on the building blocks. So the technical like knowledge that you have to actually have is coming way down pretty fast. That's about it. Thank you. I got one more. Here. One more. Yeah. Are you planning to do anything more than just the two senses, like start with them? We're planning to do everything we can explore. We're really like this. This was a super low budget production. We actually found the characters pre-made and just hooked them up and the photographs. So we're we're experimenting with a lot of remote distance sort of things. We're experimenting with different visual effects that we can start bringing into it. And uh, kind of like you see, like cool visual animations and particles and smoke and all that. So yeah, yeah I think it's pretty open. Snow vision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's those like 4D theaters, like that that you like they will spray you in the face a little bit and rock your chair. Um, but actually, you can get a lot from a uh, from a like just a little bit of heat and a little bit of wind. It just like it captures that immersion in a real believable way. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you very much.